One day we, we arrived to visit her and we found that she had bruises on her eyes and her face and her cheeks. Somebody had beaten her during the night. When we inquired as to who had been in charge of her that night, of course this was, this was in the morning, the people there said, well, this happened during the night and we have no way of checking who was responsible for her during the night. And of course, I didn't believe this. It's hard to believe that a place like that would not be able to check back. But anyhow, we asked to see the, uh, the person in charge and she gave us the same song and dance. You know, so. so we decided to take her out of there and we put her in another, in another place. But it so happened that even though we thought she would be cared better at this new place, uh, my wife and I arrived one day and uh, she seemed to be asleep. And we walked up to her, we nudged her, trying to wake up and she wouldn't respond. We kept on shaking her and I, I lifted up her arm and it just dropped down to, to the bed, limping. And, uh, and I said, oh my God, she's passed away. So I told my wife uh, to go call my brothers and sisters and let them know. But while she was gone, I, I continued trying to do something for my mother. And as I did, I grabbed her face and I started turning her face. And I found that the oxygen, oxygen mask was underneath her cheek. So uh, I pulled it out, placed it on her face, and uh, and I sat down to see what would happen. In the meantime, I was praying that God would, would intercede somehow for us. And after about 10 or 15 minutes, which seemed like an eternity, she started stirring. And she started slowly opening her eyes. And I thank God, you know, that we had arrived there in time. Possibly if we had been detained any longer, maybe she would have passed away. But then uh, she did pass away about two or three months later. And she passed away on, on September 15th, which is my oldest brother's birthday. And this was 20 days before she would have been 99.